All right, now we move to the future of work. Uh, I'm not gonna go through uh, the future of work as we embark on the third act, meaning the fall. Uh, how we are going to continue working. Are we gonna be working from home? Are we opening up? What's happening? What are state are we in? What are we doing about school? I uh, am curious and uh, I brought on an expert who just did a lot of research in our show and tell section. And Jesse Kernan, uh, who did all this research with We Are Rosie, who is uh, a newer, innovative marketing firm that's uh, women founded, all women founded. And I got to know Stephanie Olson, one of the founders, and was really impressed by the work that they're doing, huge fans. And then I learned about Jesse's work. And in my show and tell section where I have uh, somebody illuminate their research or a new startup or a piece of creative work, uh, this is that section. And because I zeitgeisted the whole time, uh, I'm not having a, a heart to mind segment where I'm having uh, the particular zeitgeists on from uh, particular industries. So uh, I'm honored to have Jesse here for the remainder of the time. And then we have our very special closing, which please stay on for because it's really, really special. And again, I encourage all of you, if you got anything out of the last 21 weeks uh, in zeitguide.com backslash thank you and Jarvis, please put in the chat. If you could contribute, that would be amazing. And you could also see all the culture classes for the last 21 weeks. And uh, if you're interested in the fall, you know, I'm going to continue doing my culture classes for, uh, you know, for organizations and uh, the premium class uh, where anybody from any industry or company could come on once a week. I have several classes of 15 people or less where you could be more interactive. You could challenge me. You could be like, what do you mean by that? you know, TikTok of vacation. People have always been doing that. But that's, you know, that's my point. My job is to help you see a global perspective. It's my perspective, clearly, of, con of connecting or synthesizing what I've been reading from all these sources and many, many more. Fine filter focus, I call it. I find all the things and curating. I filter it through curating and then helping you find the heartbeat of what matters and create a cultural narrative and track it every week. And this is kind of like a structure, like think of it as a coat rack where you can hang on your own analysis and ideas that can impact or shape your future strategies to make sure that you're culturally relevant to what's going on around you. Uh, so it's not just about your day to day and it's a lot harder because you're balancing more work, home, life, whatever, health. And uh, so I'm hoping that I could save you time. So let's go back to what we were talking about and we're excited about before, Jesse Kernan. So uh, Jesse, so thankful that you're here and uh, excited to hear what you have to say from your research. All right, thanks. The Rosie Report was born to sort of expose everything that we've learned in two and a half years of working in this completely new model that was built on flexibility. And validate that with quantitative and qualitative research and publish this report. We actually began in December and published in May and we all know, as you just reviewed, what's gone down between those dates. Um, Pre-COVID, we were kind of on this mission to convince everyone that remote work was essential to the future, that embracing flexible talent is a form of inclusion, um, destigmatizing this choice to be independent, a consultant, a freelancer, a remote um, worker. And then COVID hit, followed by the revitalization of the you know, movement for Black lives, and it ca catapulted us in this research onto this bigger, more receptive stage. So as you said, kind of magnifier and accelerator. All right, but so, in a great so way, we were like... So give me, because of lack of time, what are three takeaways that we could learn from your report? And we're all going to go deeper. And Jarvis, if you could put it in chat where we could all read it, because I find it highly valuable. Yeah. Well, as you said, you know, work wasn't working long before COVID. And there's lots of evidence of that in the report, which I won't get into. Um, but also, I think 
one thing to know for sure that is really important as a trend is that independence is can be a reaction to an adverse event, but it becomes actually a conscious choice and preference um, because of the flexibility and the, um, and the humanity that it affords. So whether it was a result of a, a layoff, a health event, a family event, whatever, um, ultimately 35% of people say, no thanks, I'm not going back to full-time work. So in this world we're in right now where we have 40 million plus people unemployed, imagine the inflow and surge of people who are going to stay independent and how this is going to affect the economy as a whole. Um, what is happening as a result trend wise is that like shape shifting is becoming this new superpower, um, superpower for the talent and superpower for organizations. So um, what do you mean by shape shifting? Um, well, so organizations becoming shape shifting shapeshifters, for example, embracing, needing to embrace flexible talent. This, this is real deal talent that's migrating into a new way of working and isn't coming back to their organizations, right? So the way that we've done things in the past, which is full-time hires in, you know, physical places with set fixed hours or an expectation of a certain number of hours or more, um, that can't any longer be the way that all of the work gets done because the talent isn't all going to be there. So adopting flexible talent strategies is the only way to actually get to a wholly inclusive workforce, but also to um, a place where you have the resilience that you require, the, the level of talent that's required for things like innovation and, and top you know, level creativity. So, so I guess what you're trying to say, and uh, how are you at the top of the hour? Well, we'll all read our reports, uh, your report, but in terms of flexibility, you're basically saying that right now, because we're staying home and working, right? And we're also uh, unemployed and also companies are basically furloughing people and trying to cut costs right now the flexible worker is going to be, you know, a thing. Absolutely. And um, it's not only that they're furloughing and, and laying off people and, and, and cutting costs, but they're also realizing they have to completely transform, that there is big time work to do in the face of this reduction in workforce. So how is that work actually going to get done? And how do you do that in a way that's going to be um, you know, mitigating some level of risk? Um, and that's where fractional talent and flexible talent has this really amazing role to play in our, this whole evolutionary journey. And what do you mean by fractional talent? And then I have one more question and we're going to have to move on. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, yeah, so fractional talent being talent that's applied to a, a piece of business or a, um, a project on a part-time basis for a short you know, amount of time. So um, you may need half of a, and this is really relevant as we gotten into this era of like hyper specialization of roles, right? More complexity means more specialization. You don't necessarily need full-time bodies of all of those different hyper-specialized functions all the time. That's what gets us into financial challenges and where we have to do mass layoffs. If we're able to employ 25% of this and 12% of that and 37% of this, you start to be able to get that work done, but without um, all of the financial burden. Okay, so one I'll last question though. So how, if it's not, so it's not gonna be financially burdensome for the company. And it's going to allow for flexibility, which was a conversation beforehand, because there are a lot of, especially women who wanted to, you know, stay home and raise their kids, uh, more women than men, this impacted their careers. And then 20 years later, when they want to go back, they had a tough time. So this whole flexible workplace was a conversation before, and it seems like COVID is amplifying that or accelerating that. Yeah. But what about people who need like a steady paycheck? Well, I don't think that steady paychecks are going away. I think every organization is going to need to find a way into sort of a hybrid state where there is a core that's steering um, the organization and then there is the flex. But even in the flex, I think you're, you're throwing me a little softball here. Um, there, part of the shape shifting is, is mindset shifting as well. And for um, people in this new era of sort of independent work being more 
normalized and more commonplace, the shift is occurring from thinking about job stability, which we're now all very leery of <laughs> conceptually, to income stability. And so when you, when you reorient your mind as a worker, as someone who is, who is looking to you know, do something in exchange and receive income in exchange for time, you start thinking about how do I um, do, what do I do and how do I do that in a way that stabilizes me financially, but not necessarily weds me to an individual um, organization. Um, and I think that's very liberating for talent. So liberating. <laughs>